I'm very excited to start this tutorial using my perfect photo shoot by On One, integrated perfectly with Photoshop version CS5.1. I'm going to go to File Automate and I'm choosing Perfect Effects. Here we go, it's going to launch the interface of Perfect Photo Shoot and uh, immediately I will uh, close the zoom and pan window. I don't need it right now for this tutorial, but normally I use it when I work on uh, real cases and then I'm going to stretch these windows so that it covers the user interface of Photoshop behind. I'm going to start by creating a effect from the category movie look. You notice that in my effect stack here, I got an empty layer. All I need to do is just to fill it using one of the categories here. Click on uh, movie looks and then I choose the first one, Arcpan. And when I apply this one immediately, the photo change and assign that effect to the empty layer. I'm going to create a new layer just by clicking the add button at the bottom of the effect stack. And this time I'm going to choose another effect, but this time from the category called details. I love this one. It's called amazing details. It's the first one here. When I click it immediately bring to live the photo. So now we have two layers on top of the original background. One is taken from the movie looks. The other one is taken from the category called details. I'm going to create a new layer on top. Let's scroll down and click on add. And I can choose to add another effect from the category borders. Borders basically add a border to the photo. Some of them are really nice. I like in particular this one called Dano, D-A-N-O, because it creates a kind of vintage effect around the photo. It's like a nice vintage frame. On top of that, I'm going to create another layer. This is going to be the last one. So I click on the word add and uh, it creates an empty layer which I will fill using a filter from the category black and white. From the category black and white there is one filter called the secret formula. What they put in it, I don't know, nobody knows, it's secret. So I'm going to click on secret formula and here we go, the photo become one of those very old black and white photos. However, I would like to retain a little bit of color information in this area of the photo where the wall was greenish. So I'm going to take my favorite tool in the perfect photo suite by on one. It's called the masking bug. All I need to do is just to click on the masking bug and then position my mouse where I want to retain the color and just click. Here we go. Now there are two strange antennas on the left and on the right. This one defines the opacity of the effect. If I stretch it all the way out, it will make 100% opacity. So the effect is actually available only around this area. Meaning that in this case, since I'm working on the secret formula black and white filter, the masking bug is masking only this area. Therefore, it will recover color. You can move the bug around and you see that there is a grid that tells us exactly where it is affecting. There are also two little antennas here that you can pull and stretch in order to make the effects larger or shorter. The most interesting antenna is the one on the right because it combines two effects. It's both the layer opacity but also the feather of the mask. So you can either bring it down towards zero degrees or up towards 90 degrees. And if you bring it up towards 90 degrees, you will see that the effect will soften or sharpen because the feathering of the effect will expand. All the way to the right, you see the sharp effect and all the way to the top, and you see that it fades much further in terms of color. Therefore, I'm gonna keep the one that I like the most. I like it about in between, and I reposition it where I want it. You can also rotate it, and in this case, I will position it, uh, for example, also testing on another side. If I like it on this part, and I also want to have a little part there, for example, only this building, and I don't want it to go from top to bottom or bottom to top, I only want to localize the effect on one part of the building, then I will choose this other great tool called the masking brush. When I click on the masking brush, all I need to do is just to brush what I want to retain. And there you go, it's done. When I want to save these uh, output in Photoshop, all I need to do is to come to the right hand side of the interface and click on to apply. When I click apply, it brings the effects to Photoshop, it closes the perfect photo shoot, and here we go. Basically everything is saved on another layer and if we hide that layer in the stack of layer in Photoshop we will see the original photo underneath.
before and after, before and after. Notice that you can change at any point in time the visibility of that layer using the fill on the top right. It goes from 0 to 100%. So if we think the effect is too strong, we can decrease this one and reveal a little bit of the original underneath. In this case, I'm applying only a 66% opacity to the effect created with my perfect photo shoot. I'm going to hide the layer and show the original and then show it one more time. This is my final result. I'm happy with this one. I can proceed to save it with another name. In this case, I'm going to choose File, Save, and I'm going to choose it as a TIFF file and save it on my desktop.